Here's how I built what nerds refer to as a cyber deck, or what normal people call an all-in-one PC. Basically, something that has a built-in screen and keyboard, but isn't just a laptop. Step number one, head to Google and Instagram to find a bunch of photos to create a mood board that I can then draw inspiration from. Which brings us to step number two, where I start sketching out all of my various concepts until I land on something that I think will work for the general shape of the computer. Step number three, actually figure out what electrical components I'm going to be using for this build. And after a bunch of research, I ended up with these components. A mini Bluetooth keyboard that's meant to be used with smartphones, but can also just Bluetooth connect to any other device. A seven inch touchscreen that is powered via micro USB and can plug into HDMI. And for the brain of this computer, I got the Zima board, a small single board computer, which is mainly advertised for using as a DIY home server or for building a NAS. But amongst its many functionalities, it can also run Windows 10, which does not come pre-installed. This is not going to be a super powerful computer, but I don't really need it to be. See, there's really only a small handful of computer games that I like to play, and one of them is an RTS from 1999 called Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun. And this old Windows game is not compatible with my new shiny MacBook Pro. So this Cyberdeck only really needs to meet two criteria. One, it needs to be able to run Windows 10 and a game from 1999, so it doesn't have to be very powerful. And two, I just want it to look really cool and also kind of match the aesthetic of Tiberian Sun, the game that I will be playing on it, which has this kind of rugged, retro, sci-fi aesthetic. Once I got all of the measurements from the components, I could move on to step number four, modeling and 3D printing the enclosure. I spent a lot of time just adding little details to this design to really give it a lot of depth and character. super happy with the way this turned out and I'm kind of amazed that it printed perfectly the first time without failing. And now it was finally time for what I think was the funnest part of this project. Step number five, painting and weathering. Weathering especially is just really fun. It brought all of the details to life and suddenly it went from just being a chunk of plastic to really looking like a battle-worn piece of equipment. Now for step number six assembling all of the components and 3D printed parts together. So the touchscreen gets screwed onto the back of this panel and there wasn't a lot of room on the side of this for the cables to get plugged in. 
So I had to get this 90 degree HDMI cable. And that's when I realized that the micro USB cable wouldn't fit in here either. So I had to do a bit of modification. This looks really rough, but I think it's still working and it does bend just enough that it will actually plug into the screen now. And on the front of this panel is a slot where the keyboard just kind of snaps into place. The keyboard has this extra like leather cover thing that came with it. So I'm gonna have to cut this off of here. I then installed the Zima board inside of the housing and connected this small clip to hold it in place. From there, it was just a matter of getting all of the cables plugged in, screwing in the front panel, and connecting the handle. Also, the Zima board does not have built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but that's pretty easily remedied by just plugging in one of these little USB antennas. This has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi all in one. So I'm just gonna plug that in back here. And now we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. This thing is now looking awesome, but there's still one step left to actually making this a functional computer. Step number seven installing the software. And I did not film any of this process because I ran into some big problems and it took me an entire day just to figure out how to get Windows installed on here. Long story short, I had to access the drives on the Zima board and then write some code to manually reformat the drives to make them compatible with Windows. It was an absolute nightmare, but I finally got through it, and then after that, it took me about five minutes to download and install my game, and now Tiberian Sun is up and running. So now I can finally sit back and spend some time playing my RTS from 1999 and enjoying the aesthetics of my new cyber deck. Mission accomplished. really happy with the way that this turned out, but there are some features that this is missing that I might add in the future. For example, right now it has to be plugged into power, so I think it would be cool to add a power bank somewhere on the inside so that it would be completely mobile. Also, a bit of an oversight, but this doesn't have any speakers, but those should also be pretty easy to add. The Zima board also maxes out at just 32 gigs of internal storage. So I might put like a small one terabyte SSD in here as well. If you guys are interested in building this cyber deck, I will have a parts list in the description below and the files for this 3D print. And I would recommend getting the same exact screen and keyboard so that they actually fit properly in this front panel. But when it comes to the Zima board, you could literally use any other little mini PC and put it in here. And most of those would come with Windows pre-installed, so that might save you a headache as well. Zima board is a great device, but it's more tailored for geeks who wanna like build their own NAS. If you're still here, then maybe consider subscribing. You can check out some more of my other videos over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.